Hi guys, today I'm going to read Disney Pixar Storybook Collection. This book has many stories, but I decided that I would read Finding Nemo. Nemo was a little clownfish. He lived with his father, Marlin, on the Great Barrier Reef. Nemo longed for adventure, but Marlin, Marlin worried about what might happen to him. On the first day of school, Marlin took Nemo to class. Nemo's teacher, Mr. Ray, promised Marlin that Nemo would be, be safe. But when Marlin found out that the class was going to the drop off a steep cliff, he was furious. He decided to follow the class. At the drop off, Nemo and his new friends steered one another to swim out and touch a dive boat. Just then, Marlin showed up. You think you can just do these things, but you can't, he told Nemo. Nemo wanted to prove his dad wrong. He swam to the boat and hit it with his fin. But as he swam back, a diver appeared behind him. The diver pulled out a net and scooped up Nemo. Then he took the little clownfish back to his boat. As he sped off, he accidentally knocked the scuba mess into the water. Marlin chased after Nemo but he wasn't fast enough. Has anybody seen a boat? He asked any fish who would listen. As Marlin swam, he met the fish named Dory. Hey, I've seen a boat, she said. Follow me. Marlin started to follow Dory, but as soon as they started swimming, she whirled around. Stop following me, she shouted. Marlin was confused. Hadn't Dory just offered to help him find the boat? Then Dory explained that she suffered from short-term memory loss. Figuring Dory couldn't help him, Marlin turned to leave and found himself face to face with a great white shark. The shark's name was Bruce. He invited Dory and Marlin to get together in an old sunken ship. Marlin was sure it was a trap, but Dory wanted to go. She was the only fish he'd found who had seen a boat, so Marlin followed her. Inside, there were two other shy sharks named Anchor and Chum. Together with Bruce, they pledged, Fish are friends, not food. Suddenly, Marlin spotted a diver's mask. Dory saw some writing on the strap. She swam over to read it, but the strap snapped against her and her nose began to bleed. Smelling blood, Bruce decided that he wanted to eat Marlin and Dory after all. Miles away, Nemo found himself in a fish tank at the dentist's office. The other fish called themselves the Tank Gang. Their leader was a fish named Gil. The Tank Gang passed the time watching a dentist work and talking to their pelican friend, Nigel. Nemo wanted to go home more than anything, but the dentist had other plans. He was going to give Nemo to his niece, Darla. The tank gang warned Nemo that Darla's fish never lived for very long. Nemo's new friends didn't want him to get hurt. They had to find a way to escape. Gil had a plan. He explained that if someone could jam the filter, the dentist will have to take the fish out of the tank to clean it. They could escape by rolling out the windows and into the harbor. Back in the ocean, Dory and Marlin had escaped the sharks and dragged the mess into a deep, dark cave. Marlin struggled to hold onto the light antenna of an anglerfish while Dory studied the writing on the mask. P. Sherman for two wallaby way Sydney, Dory read. Marlin knew that this must be the diver's address. Soon, Marlin and Dory were on their way to Sydney. Suddenly, Dory into a tiny jellyfish. I shall call him Squishy, and he shall be mine, she said happily, but Squishy wasn't alone. Marley and Dory swam into an entire forest of deadly jellyfish. The jellyfish stung their friends, making them feel weak and tired. By the time they reached the safety of an open water, they had been stung all over their bodies, holding onto the injured 
To the injured Dory, Marlene fell asleep. When Marlene woke up, he was lying on the deck of a sea turtle shell. Around them, hundreds of sea turtles trolled with the lightning fast East Australian current, while Dory played hide and seek with a joint young turtle named Squirt. Marlene told the turtles about his search for Nemo. Squirt told the story to a lobster, who told it to a dolphin. Soon, Mar's story spread all the way to Sydney, where Nigel heard it. Nigel sped off to the dentist's office. Your dentist been fighting the entire ocean looking for you, he told Nemo. And the word is, he's headed this way right now, to Sydney. Really? Nemo asked. He couldn't believe his head was so adventurous. Marlin was risking everything to save him. Nemo realized that if he was ever going to get home, he had to be brave. He picked up a pebble and carefully jammed it into the tank's filter. Soon the tank would be so dirty the dentist would have to take the fish out and clean it. But escaping was not so easy. When the fish woke up, in the morning, the tank was so clean, the dentist had installed a new filter. Nemo's escape plan was ruined. As the dentist scooped up Nemo and put him into a plastic bag, the office door banged open. Darla had arrived. But when the dentist looked inside the plastic bag, Nemo was floating belly up. Nemo winked at his friends. He was pretending to be dead. Meanwhile, outside Sydney, Marley and Dory had met the Nigel. The pelican flew them straight to the dentist's office. When Marley saw Nemo floating lifelessly in the back, he thought his son was dead. Before Marley could learn the truth, the dentist shoot Nigel away. Out with ya, he cried. Stay out. Nigel returned into the harbor and dropped Marlene Dory into the water. Marlene wanted to be alone. He swam out to the sea, leaving Dory behind. A few minutes later, Nemo saw off a nearby pipe. He had been flushed down the drain. Nemo saw Dory swimming in circles. Are you all right? He asked. I'm Nemo. You're Nemo, Dory cried, hugging him lap. Happily, Nemo and Dory raced after Marlene. Daddy! Nemo called out. Marlin couldn't believe it. Nemo was alive after all. It was time to go home. Several weeks later, Nemo was back home and ready for school. This time, Marlin was ready too. He knew that his son could take care of himself. Nemo waved as he swung away. Bye, Dad! Oh, wait, I forgot something. He swung back and hugged Marlin. Love you, Dad. Marley smiled. Love you. I love you too, son. He said. Now go have an adventure. And that's the end, guys. Hope you liked the story. Bye.